Welcome back, everybody. Okay, so here we are. I am not filming in advance today because, well, I am definitely getting sick for the year. Yesterday, I worked from about 4 in the morning until, what was it, 12, 30, 1 o'clock in the afternoon, and then I just collapsed, and I slept until about 5, 5, 5, 30, and then I went back to bed at about 8 o'clock, and I slept through until 2 o'clock this morning, so when I sleep like that, I'm getting sick, and I can tell from my voice and all the other lovely things that are going on that I'm getting sick, but that's okay. It's not COVID. It is not um, the flu. I I will be all right. It's just my typical yearly ick. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. So if I am coughing, it is my body trying to remove the garbage from my chest. Please forgive me on that one and just kind of work with me. So we're going to start a different diamond painting today. I am one to one and a half days worth of work depending on how much I can stay awake from being completed on fall time. It's so pretty. Even my son loves it and it's going up in the house. But I didn't want to put you through seeing the same thing again. Um, I wanted to give you something else to look at and kind of give you a guide for mostly beginners but some experienced diamond painters who like me, shake and have jerking hands and all the fun stuff like diamond trays that go flying. <laughs> now this that this is on, this is my artist clipboard. I wanted to show you this because I use this for my drawing obviously. But this is nice to hold down a di the top of a diamond painting or the side or, you know, whatever it is that you're doing. And it just slips right in place and locks down. You can get these on Amazon and pretty much on any artist website there is. And they are not that expensive. This is, I believe, a... Is it 18 or 24? I don't remember. I think it's an 18 by 18. Let me see. No, nope. It's probably bigger. Anyway, I like the square sizes. That's me. And I'm going to show you what we're going to work on today. <laughs> Some of you may already know because you saw the unboxing of it or unbagging or whatever you want to call it. And you know I have to do this because, well, it hasn't felt much like Halloween. And today I just need some happy until the Amazon driver arrives with a very sweet gift from a very close friend. Um, who knows that when I get really sick, my mind gets kind of boggled. And so I can't focus to diamond paint and I really can't focus to draw. So I used to do coloring books and I stopped doing them because, well, I ran out of time. But one of my, well, two of my favorite coloring books um, were ruined in a move by water damage and it broke my heart. They are Johanna Bashford and I, it's her art just amazes me. Um, my favorite so far has been Enchanted Forest because, you know, wolves and foxes and all that good stuff. But my other favorite one is Secret Garden. And this friend of mine had some um, customer appreciation uh, bonus money, shall we say, given to her by Amazon. And it ended up only costing her about a dollar to get this and have it sent to me. So it will arrive sometime today. And I will, when I'm laying in bed and can't think straight, I will be doing some coloring. I don't know that you guys want to see that. I am not a coloring channel. I am an artist and diamond painting channel. So I draw, I paint. I even do paint by numbers because I absolutely love doing it. It's so much fun. But I just want to give my mind a place to rest. This month has been so crazy with the channel. Um, my goal was to do 31 videos in 31 days, but it turned out to be that if I can finish it out, 
depending on how ill I become, it will be 32 in 31 days because there was one that I threw in there that was short. So you got two in one day at one point. And then I'm going back to my not so many diamond painting and drawing videos every month. The daily schedule is just kicking my behind. All right, so here we go. I'm going to unveil it. <laughs> yes, my very, 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 very favorite cartoon characters in the world. Scooby-Doo. I love all the characters from Scooby-Doo. And this is Scooby and Shaggy with the Mystery Machine. And I believe we're going to see some Aurora Borealis action up there. But I also thought that, you know, we would play with this a little bit. Because... I want to make sure that I get the initial area lined up, and I did figure out which ruler works on this ahead of time. Now let's see if I can line it up in a reasonable amount of time. Hmm. Good luck. Now this says 30 foot by 40, but that is the canvas size, and it does not match the canvas size. It is not true to size in that way. But this one on the site stated that that was canvas size. So, you know... That's okay. They were honest. They were up front. I'm good. And it was a limited edition image. And I just, you know, come on, folks. It's Scooby-Doo. <laughs> okay, time for some crinkle. Yay, crinkle. Sorry, I like the noise. I think it's, it's just, it means, ooh, we're going to be happy. We have something cool to play with. Alright, so I'm looking for number one, which is obviously purple. When I do this by the bag of color, when I work by color, I work in order, okay? Even though this would lead me to work in the 310 first, right? Well, that's number two. So, we'll see how it goes, okay? <laughs> These are not diamonds that I'm going to... Um, worry too much about but they do have the dmc codes on this this was an amazon purchase i am not putting the link in because i don't think anybody else is as much of a scooby-doo crazy person as i am so there you are or should i start at the bottom with 21 where's the a's well there's a lot of those right in the middle of the mystery machine i'm trying to figure out what to do for you guys let me put you just on hold for a moment while I make a final decision on where we're going. Okay, everybody. So, I am going to go backwards because in order to have the ruler really work to kind of center everything and line it up, I want to start in an area that has a strip across. Now, I will tell you, these rulers work equally as well going up, okay, vertically. However, my body says we're going horizontally. Okay, so since I didn't get to do a full demonstration of them last time, and I do have a few new viewers, we're going to start today. Now, I'm taking my scissors and cutting this along this perforated line. Why do I cut it? Because I have in the past gone to rip one off, and it rips the other bag open. The one I don't want open. So, there you are. There's my reasoning. Okay? I got asked recently, do I use the toolkits that are sent to me? Well, I keep the single placer tips so that I can replace the ones in my acrylic pens as needed. But if I kept all of them, it would, you know, get a little crazy. So no, I do not. I used to be affiliated with somebody that I would, you know, once in a while send a package full of trays and stuff because their local schools utilize those trays and they utilize the pens to make polymer clay diamond painting pens. I'm no longer associated with that person. So, right now they're just kind of piling up in a, in a container and overflowing. So I have to figure out what to do with them. Our local schools and things are shut down. So, well, that won't work. 
can't go that route. Sorry, I had to level that out a little bit. Can't do it that way. I do, however, keep, you know, like this kit, okay, for example, it came with a thin pour placer. Uh, dude, I'm keeping that. No question. Favorite multi-placer ever. I wish they would come out with a five that's thin, but, you know, I haven't found it. Not that I have money to spend anyway. And I do keep the wax. Someday, I hope to have a small tray of some sort that can hold, or stand of some sort that can hold multiple trays so that I can work multiple colors because I like confetti-rich pieces. I also keep the baggies because I use them constantly. So it's really just the the boats and or trays, if you want to call them that, and these cylinders that I don't use. And I no longer know anybody that can use them that I'm friends with. So, yeah, there's that. Ah... <sighs> So, at some point, I will have to figure out how to dispose of them responsibly. Because I like the environment. In spite of what's going on with it in Arizona right now. Okay, let me shift you guys so you can see the entire area. Okay, sorry about that. I had you nice and level with the surface, but the problem is then you couldn't see over here unless... You know, I were able to swing the diamond painting around, which can't do right now. So, first I'm going to put my glasses on. <laughs> and I'm going to show you how to properly place these rulers. Now, this is a poured glue diamond painting, okay? So, it is easier, I have to say, to use these on poured glue. And it is on double-sided adhesive. However, that's only because it's easier to remove them that way. So I'm trying to pick where are we starting? Hmm. How about the top line of that area? Line up this left edge nicely. Now there's a slit on the side here. It gives you a good indicator as to where to line it up against the adhesive. Okay. Once you line that up, then you kind of manipulate the right side so that it is directly over what you want, okay? I'm making sure I get this right so I'm not misguiding you guys. There we go. See that? It's just right. I'm wiggling it a little bit to make sure. The other ruler does not fit this at all, let me tell you. Not even a bit. And yes, it's very sticky, but I'm using my fingernails to press it in place so that it's lined up perfectly, okay? So then I can slip my cover back over it for a moment. Oops. At least if I pull it out from under it. There we go. And push it down without getting my finger oils into the sticky or lotion or what you know whatever you got on your paws <laughs> pause i'm so funny I'm kidding all right so then i'm gonna take my number 25 and the reason i do this this way is so that i can later identify it against the diamond painting so that i can organize these if i'm going to keep them and i'm slicing this open off camera Okay, there we go. Nice and open. Into the tray. Ooh, that is so pretty. Oh, I love that green. That is 3048. It's a gorgeous color. So then, I take and I cut out this little code. Because it's got the 25 on it, you see. And what you can do, although I'm not taking the time today is you can write the DMC code on it as well. I just don't happen to have a pen handy to do so. I would have to go into the studio and get it and... Uh, no, I'm not moving around that much today. <laughs> <coughs> Every time I get moving around, I have trouble breathing right now, so... I'm trying to hold still as best as I can. 
Now this painting is around, just for reference. So I have opened a baggie. I am taking this little slip that has the number and later on when I'm near a pen or marker, I will put the DMC code at the top. And I slip that right in the bag. Now the reason for this, for those who are beginners, because those who have diamond painted a million diamond paintings, like myself, or so it feels like, good gracious, I need to count how many I've done, then it's in there, and I can just pour the diamonds in, and I have an identifier, okay? So for now, I close that up, and set it to the side. And there we go. Perfect. Shake my drills out really nicely. Now I prefer them to be away, more of them on the side that is away from me because it's hard for me to see them in here. But there's a lot of these drills and I it looks like there's going to be a ton left over. It really does. Based on looking at, you know, the diamond count on the canvas. But this is only used on the mystery machine and a few little ones on uh, Scooby's collar and the tip of Shaggy's shirt. So, yeah, this will be quick and easy today. Once I'm done making videos for you guys, then I'm going to go back and finish up fall time. So I can get it hung up. Now, I have a particular glitch in the way that I work with this. I like to hold my tray beneath where I'm working. Because I wear a long sleeve sweater. Yeah, fun, right? Hmm. I normally have something like plastic from another diamond painting or whatever that I can set over it to prevent the problem. But apparently, right now, I do not. So, okay, we're going to go about this another way. We're going to grab up a diamond painting pen. Hopefully this one I do not need to refill with wax, but you never know with me. And we're just going to start throwing these diamonds in here. You're going to hear a little pop once in a while. Like that. So for those who like doing square diamond paintings like I do, a lot of you like that popping sound. I have no preference on it either way. So this should be very satisfying for you to get that sensation. Sorry, Fluffer is moving around. She's so cute. She's just like, um, Mom, why are you running your mouth? Uh, I think my puppies ask me that often. I've also, uh, on Natalia's video, Lovecraft Forever, she was talking about whether or not you could use a multi-placer with these. Now, a long time ago, I did a video demonstrating, or a live stream, I'm not sure which it was, that you can use a multi-placer and how to do so with these rulers. So I line my diamonds up on my ruler, my multi-placer, as always, put them onto the ruler, the area where I want them placed, and lay them down. Now I heard a couple snap in, but just in case, I'm just going to push, and there you are. So yes, you absolutely can multi-place with these rulers. It's not even an issue. Um, it really doesn't steal any of your time. You just got to flip your pen over and make sure it's where it belongs. So, there we are. This was, I guess, kind of a demonstration video, and I wasn't really intending that, but, oops, sorry. I'm smacking the crap out of it. That's my morning this morning. Uh, anyway, I started to tell you that most of the country, and Arizona in particular, has had a problem this year that nobody foresaw. And it has affected my house, and I'm really not happy about it. Our temperatures have been different this year than they normally would. The cycle of temperatures. It didn't get nearly as hot, and... As it normally does and on top of that it has stayed unseasonably warm <coughs> so what happened is that the field mice that 
live all over Arizona and are what the rattlesnakes feed on. Just keep that in mind as I tell you this. Um, their population has increased significantly. I am freaking out. I don't like mice. Now, when I had pet mice, that was one thing. They were little white mice. They weren't little field mice that carry diseases. Ugh. Okay. So, let's start with that. So, my home has been invaded due to construction on top of the temperature issues. They built a couple of houses across the street, across the main road, and that is only about 150 feet from my house. I mean, less than an eighth of a mile, okay? Even I, with my breathing problems, can walk there. Apparently, this needs a little more wax. So, that uprooted the mice from their home. Thanks so much, rich people, for having to build some fancy schmancy house. And they were constructing some businesses. But that didn't send them our way. So then my next door neighbor gets these two gigantic dogs that one of them is just about as vicious as they come and aggressive as they come. Sorry, I heard something. And they feed their dogs outside and they keep their dog food outside. What do you think that's going to do? It attracts the damn mice. So then, these stupid things that have super sensitive smell can smell that, guess what? There are bowls of puppy food in my house. Now, I keep the bags of dog food sealed in a container that has got a rubber seal around it. It is locked up airtight. You know, it just, A, it keeps the puppy food fresher, and B, it prevents it from attracting pests. Yeah. Nope, apparently my tactics weren't good enough. Between the construction, the boom in mice population in the Phoenix area, um, and the idiots next door keeping dog food outside to attract these mice, I woke up this morning, went outside, got my coffee made, had a cigarette, came back in, and there was a dead field mouse in my baby's water. Do you want to see Mama Eskies come out of her skin and unglued? That did it. I freaked. Now, luckily, when I freak out, I can generally stay pretty quiet and appear to be very calm, even though I'm not. So I grab my baby's bowl, I flush the dead mouse down the toilet. Sorry, but I don't want the corpse in my house. Okay? It's that simple. I don't want it in my trash, because the dead mice will attract more mice. I know, because I looked it up. So, I then looked up how to repel these suckers naturally in a way that is completely not going to harm my dogs. And I found out they don't like strong smells such as white vinegar. <laughs> well, sadly, I was almost out of white vinegar. However, I used all the white vinegar I had and about three handfuls of cotton balls. I soaked those suckers in vinegar and put them everywhere that a mouse might want to hide. In my room, behind the washer and dryer, under my piano, behind my piano, um, in my office, uh, <laughs> in my kitchen. I don't like mice, guys. I don't, I, I no, mm -mm. Because here's the big glitch. If I don't take immediate measures and get it under control ASAP, here's what will happen. It will attract the rattlesnakes. You heard me. Diamondback. Western Diamondback rattlesnakes. Which will inevitably kill my animals. 
So, on the first, when we get paid, because at this point we have no money, I am going to be buying a couple of things. First of all, the biggest thing of white vinegar I can find, and some more cotton balls to go with it. And secondly, humane traps. Now, am I going to go release these mice into the wild? No. I'm being a bitch. Sorry, excuse my language please, but I don't like these things. I don't want them in my house. I don't want them near my puppies or me. And I have a very dear friend who is like a son to me and is my tattoo artist who has captive rattlesnakes who do not eat live prey. They eat frozen rats and mice. So, I don't want my animals to be able to get near poisons, so obviously that's off limits. And if you poison a mouse or rat, and the animal then eats said rat, they will consume the poisons. And mice bait and things contain blood thinners. That's how they kill them. No thank you. Because secondarily, it can kill my dogs. So that is a no-go. So I'm going to get the enclosed humane tra traps that even if my pups were to get near it, A, they can't let the mice out, and B, they cannot get bitten or come in contact with the mice. I'm good. That works for me. And then I'm going to have those mice delivered to my sweet Dusty and let him then humanely dispatch them as I know how he does it and it is the most humane method um, and then they can feed his snakes because my only other option is to spend about two hundred dollars to get a professional in here and then I'm gonna be finding dead mouse corpse everywhere and I, I can't do that I cannot afford to do that. So, yeah, that's been my morning. Oh, joy. And I was in a really good mood after seeing Natalia's video. Although I'm so sad because the adhesive on one of her special rose diamond paintings is so rivered. It, it looked more like a valley than a river. I'm not kidding you. My heart just broke for her. Absolutely broke. Oh, I don't know what I would do. I don't. But Natalia's like me, and she looks at it and goes, Okay, well, I can fix it. Not a big deal. It can be repaired. We don't panic over it. We just figure out what to do. I don't get angry or anything like that, and neither does Natalia. And this is hopefully as angry as you guys will ever see me is because I found a dead mouse in my puppy water. Nope, nope, nope. I needless to say sterilized their bowl. Um, yeah, yick. So, I put out the vinegar balls and then, hmm, I'm glad I was on the bed. <laughs> Because I saw a mouse take off out of my laundry room <laughs> to get out of my house. And I have the back door open so they can leave because I'm not trying to kill anything. I don't like to kill things. I'm not, I don't really have it in me to be able to murder an animal. I just, oh no, I can't. But this is a situation where it's them or my babies. Sorry the mice are going to lose. My babies are far more important. So, yep, my whole house smells like white vinegar, which is not helping the fact that I'm getting sick with a breathing condition, and it's aggravating my throat, as you can hear. I'm not a happy camper. <laughs> I'm truthfully not a happy camper. Hence, we really had to pull out this Scooby Doo painting. And I didn't get to film for you guys yesterday because I collapsed. And just, I could not do anything more. Anything more. My son knows when mommy asks for a bowl of ramen, 
A, I'm not cooking for myself. What the heck? B, I'm not a ramen person. Uh, out of the instant ramens, I, I, I'm not a fan. And if I'm asking for them, it's because I'm extremely ill. And I know that I need that salt to help my throat. And I need that warmth to pull the crap up out of my chest. And guess what I asked for for dinner last night? You guessed it. Ramen. Just plain ramen. Don't even put broccoli and stuff in it because I am I just wasn't in the mood. So, and I'm always in the mood for broccoli unless I'm extremely ill. And that's when I have no appetite. Which is what I'm going through. But I knew I had to do something. So, yep, that was my night and my morning was dealing with a dead mouse and a live mouse running away from the vinegar. Thank God. So there's a tip for you guys. If you live in a place like we do where the field mice are taking over due to global warming, thank you so much. Um, and you don't have the money to have expensive pest control take care of it. White vinegar and cotton balls, you guys. And then... The traps on Amazon are two for fifteen dollars, and they keep them in an enclosed thing. It does not kill them. Um, so, yep, that's I'm putting those down. I'm hoping there's no mice for them to catch, but just in case, putting one under my bed and one in my closet, and we'll figure out where from there. But yeah, I don't do mice. I would never have come on here talking about something like this, but I found it in my baby's water bowl. Oh my god. That freaked me out so bad. So badly. <sighs> Before I saw that, I was all prepared for a super happy video and it was all going to be golden. And that literally sent me into panic. So. See, now I can even go outside of the realm of the ruler. The ruler stops right here, and I still, with the multiplacer, put a diamond in place beneath it because these little grooves are set up just for that reason. And it lined up perfectly, you guys. The ruler definitely has its place. It really does. Um, even for diamond painters like me that are very experienced, you know, I've done pretty much any type of diamond painting you can think of. Pour glue, mounting adhesive, um, <laughs> double-sided adhesive, cheap, expensive, custom, not custom. Uh, there are companies I have not tried. A lot of them that I'd like to, but now see that should help me to get these in the right place. Hopefully. Or not. You know, depends on me. Anyway, this may be an entire ruler painting, but this definitely helps when you're having a day like I'm having where you're not real focused. You are shaking and need time to calm down and you need the diamond pain to calm you down, but you can't really place the diamonds correctly at that moment, you know. This will help. So... Folks, that is where I'm going to leave this one off. And then, because I didn't get to film yesterday to have one ready for you guys today, this will go up immediately. And I will film another video with you working on Scooby-Doo. I'm sorry to divide it up like that, but I kind of have to today. My thoughts and prayers are with all of you, and I hope to God you have no mice. Um, I've never lived with mice, and I'm not going to now. So, please pray for us that these things will go away on their own and we won't have to do anything drastic. Okay? And I will talk to you all in the next one. Bye.